Hello and welcome to IELTS Writing Task 2 series, presented by Profi Education. And I am Akibar, also known as Dave, and in this video lesson, I'm going to explain about Writing Task 2 discussion questions. But first, let's have a look at an outline. In this video lesson, first I'm going to talk, explain about types of Writing Task 2 questions related to discussion, and then I'm going to explain about the structure itself and then we will move to how to write introduction series and you are going to learn how to construct the body paragraphs and finally at the last I'm going to explain how to write conclusion now let's begin with the types of questions first There are two types of questions when it comes to discussion-related question in task 2. First is just purely discussion questions. Second is opinion and discussions, where you need to discuss two views and at the same time give your personal opinion. Now, let's have a look at these sample questions. And among them, choose two, which is related to discussion question only. Well, that's what are the benefits and drawbacks and discuss the advantages and disadvantages. In these type of questions you only need to discuss pros and cons and that's it. You don't have to include your personal opinion about that and give conclusion. On the other hand, those questions discuss both views and give you an opinion or do the advantages outweigh the disadvantages? In this type of question, you've been asked to discuss both views first and then finish your assignment by giving your own personal views about the particular view. Now that's how you should answer uh, the question. So there are two types that you're going to master in these video lessons. Now let's move on to the structure. So the structure itself is basically the same for any types of task 2 questions. You're going to need an introduction, body part 1, part 2, part 3, and finally you should finish your assignment by writing conclusion. Well, this is not a golden rule, but you can use your own version. Let's say you can have two paragraphs in the body, it's completely optional. But this is the recommended version which I prefer to write. So if you wish to get better results, I recommend you to write three body paragraphs within the body. Why? Because first of all it is safe. You would definitely have the highest chance to write more than 250 words. Remember, you have to write at least 250 words. Secondly, you can give your ideas and points more separately, neatly in organized way. And three points is much better than two points. Or even some people prefer to combine two points within the paragraph. But it looks really messy. And so I advise you to write three distinct paragraphs. And it's logically organized. That's how I recommend. So, in generally, you need to write one introduction and one conclusion at the end. And complete the body part by writing two or three parts. Now let's move on to writing an introduction. To write introduction is basically the same for all the assignment task 2, but there is an exception when it comes to writing task 2 discussion essays. So first you need to write general statement about the topic and add extra sentence to support this first. So what I mean by that, you have to find out the general statement and then give extra support, give extra example or something to explain the situation. And finally, you should rephrase the question with your own words. Okay, so if it's in the question form, you have to change it into a positive sentence. And here's a reminder, you shouldn't use thesis statement when you have a discussion essay. So you do not state your own opinion in the introduction and you don't have to declare what you're going to write. So thesis statement usually is advisable to opinion and opinion related questions but when it comes to writing discussion questions 
you should better avoid them. Now let's move to the testing session. So I'm going to ask you some questions. You pause the screen and try your best to find the answer. Now which is the discussion essay? So look at the two example and decide which one of them is discussion related question. You can pause the screen and think about it. Well, that's the second one. Now let's have a look at another one. Have a look at these both, pause the screen and decide which one is discussion related question. So you should be very careful here. It shouldn't be opinion related. It should be only discussion. Okay then, now that's the second one. Let's move to writing body part one. So how to write body paragraph? So to answer, there are two types of way of answering discussion related question in IELTS writing task two. First, just a discussion, which is pros and cons method, which I've already explained at the beginning, and discussion plus opinion structure. Now I'm going to show you the style and overall structure of the essay. If it's just discussion, then here's the outline how you should lay out your entire structure of your essay. First introduction, depending in which side you think. So if you believe there are more advantages than disadvantages, then probably you could write two advantage and one disadvantage. So two pros, two paragraphs is going to be pros, and one of them the cons should be definitely. If two paragraphs is going to be the cons, then last should be the pros. Or you can have another balanced approach where one paragraph is about advantage and another about disadvantage, and you end up with right by writing conclusion. That is also another alternative. All right, uh, that's how you should construct when it comes to discussion only questions. Now let's have a look if there is a discussion and at the same time opinion. So as you can see here there is introduction and conclusion all the time. But the difference here is first two paragraphs of the body should be only discussion. Either first should be pros or cons. Depending on the first one the second should be the opposite. Let's say if the first paragraph of the body is pros, second should be the cons, or advantage versus disadvantage. And third paragraph of the body should be your own personal opinion. And in personal opinion, you should mention on which side you are standing. So if you believe there are more advantages than disadvantages, then you should state why, or vice versa. And then you have to write a conclusion. So in the coming slides, I'm going to explain you how to write conclusion. Now let's have a look at how to build the body paragraph. In body, you should have topic sentence, reason, example, result, and conclusion. Now here's the question for you. Let's have a look at the sample. You can pause the screen and find out which statements is for topic, which is reason, which is example, and which is result and conclusion. Now let's have a look through the answers. So a topic sentence is usually at the beginning of the paragraph. So some people argue that the general gap is too wide. So generation gap, what I mean. Second comes the reason. So you should always follow up with a reason and example whenever you give some point. So once you've given reason, it should be example to be followed with. But in these circumstances, um, the blue one, the technology which is used very differently is in reason and then comes the result. And final one is again reasons given. All right, so reason and example could be the same. So you might wonder why there is no conclusion 
In certain paragraphs, you don't have to need uh, include conclusion, but sometimes you may need this. So I'll keep this, I've written this deliberately because you may need a conclusion depending on your situation. But if it's not, you can use two reasons because there is a two points. And if you have given like, um, you can give two examples, sometimes you can give two results depending on how you organize. But make sure your body needs to contain all these, most of these elements such as topics, reason, example and result and conclusion is optional but you have to write at least one of them. This is usually when you write final statement in the paragraph. Now let's move on to the next. Alright, now let's uh, test your knowledge. There are the gaps uh, given for you from 1 to 5. There should be some words, linking words should be. And now try to match the linking words on your left to the right. And find which linking word is logically applicable and suitable to these numbers. Now pause your screen and try your best. So this is the answers. So as you can see, first one is the beginning, an example, because we want to give an example. So first is given point, second sentence was the reason, third was followed example. So when you want to give an example, you should you we have put the C. So a good example of this technology which is used to be very differently by different generations. So young people, for instance, that's use it when you want to give an example. Being taught up with internet and email and test messaging as a very normal part of their lives. And then there is a concession part. So if you want to give opposite idea or concession, we use LinkedIn word but, although nevertheless, despite of this. So in this here, the whole sentence being used at phrases, but this is not the case for older people who live who knew life before the internet. All right, now, from my experience, that's actually not really advisable, but you can use this. So from my experience is, uh, you can give something from your own life, but it is not really advisable for you to give all the time, because in the writing task, too, usually you have to give example in a broader way but personal experience shouldn't be allowed most of the time. But yes, in certain situations, you can give personal experience, but you should relate to the general people, not on your own people as well, not personal circumstances. Let's say, from my experience, people in this age group are slow at learning new technologies, which is very frustrating. So here the author referring to the general public, not the personal situations. And then as an example, is giving support. My parents' situation, highlight the point as the key to very long time to spend to send the text message and still haven't learned how to program the VCR yet. This is parents, her parents' situation is just an addition to that. So you may wish to not include this personal situation here, but if you include, this shouldn't be a much of a problem. But I have demonstrated this for the sake of showing you how to use the linking words, highlight the points. So linking words is a crucial if you wish to improve your writing skills. Because when you want to construct the big part body paragraph, you are marked based on two things. First is coherence, where how you organize logically. So Topic sentence, reason example, and enough support and result and conclusion is part of the co um, coercion. And cohesiveness is another factor, which means how you connect the ideas by using linking words, such as, for instance, but this is not, for example, but, although, as a result, so in conclusion. So if you wish to learn, more of this type of linking devices. You are feel free to join our vocabulary 
software platform where you can practice. It's on the Quizlet and I will tell you in more detail at the end of this lecture. Now let's continue. So here are the tips for writing body paragraph. So always begin with a topic sentence. No matter what type of task to question you are writing, you should always begin with a topic sentence. And then you should write topic sentence which is relevant to the main idea and the paragraph idea. What I mean by main idea, there should be the one core idea. So in the previous example, it was the generation difference between older and younger people. And then there should be sub idea, which is the point you want to say. So if you don't say positive point or negative point, if you agree or disagree, depending on what type of question, there should be subtopic. So it should be both related to the topic sentence. If one of them is related, another one is completely irrelevant. In that case, you are going to lose the mark because you are off topic. And then final tip is make sure you write at least four to five sentence long. Why? Because this is the secure side. If you write less than five words, there is a problem, uh, less than four words, I mean, uh, sentence, you might have a, a risk of writing less than 250 words. But it's still, there is not a golden rule. It's completely up to you as long as you make it 250, but this is at least in generally advisable tips so that you can have a better score in the future. All right, now let's move to writing conclusion. So, how to write conclusion? In conclusion, you have to follow three following steps. Write a general one sentence summary. So they should be related to the core idea. And then focus summary of the main points. So you have to mention all the points which you stated in your body paragraph. Let's say paragraph one, a paragraph two, three, four, you have to mention points. Either it should be negative or positive points. And you have to use original vocabulary. What does it mean? It means you should avoid repetition of the words that you have used. And then finally, add statement by telling your own personal opinion or something new. So here is an example. In conclusion, there are clearly both positive and negative to spending an extended period of time in overseas. So as you can see, the main topic here is in overseas. Okay, now while going abroad can be a great experience and lead to a better lifestyle for many people, there are too many differences to cope with. Well, this part is mostly related on individual points, as you can see. So the first point probably is great experience. So going abroad can be a great experience, that's a positive plus and lead a better lifestyle, that's the second plus. And probably the author mentioned something negative, which is diff differences to cope with. Maybe some people may have a difficulties to cope with living in the roads. So this is one negative. That's a briefly mentioning of what is stated in the body paragraphs. And finally, the author has given the final opinion. So in my opinion, you have to declare your own opinion. In my view, I believe if you go with the right attitude, so if you paid attention, the word you can be used in writing task two, despite it is saying formal. Because writing task two is not completely formal, it is semi-formal. Means you are allowed to use we, you types of statements and you are slightly allowed to use personal situation as well, but don't overuse it. So that's why I'm saying it is semi-formal. So if you go with the right attitude, moving overseas should be an absolutely unforgettable experience. So your final opinion should be included. It is very advisable if you wish to, and it makes it better a conclusion and longer and uh, you can have a broader opinion plus grammar range and accuracy and lexical resource bonus you can get from here. So this is the basically how we should organize your conclusion 
and how you should write typical conclusion. Now, I hope you learned something from this video lesson. So what you should do next? So if you're existing a member to our online classroom series, you have got an access for free of charge to a vocabulary series. So in Quizlet account, you should install, if you don't know the Quizlet, search in the Google what is Quizlet means. And I have already included the links in Google Classroom if you are the customer. And in this Google Classroom, you can find out the link to the vocabulary series where you can practice all IELTS writing and speaking and reading related vocabulary to expand it and build it. And you just have to search the username Akbar underscore battle of capital letters IELTS. And here, there you can find enough information and practice exercises and tests and very interactive cards about vocabulary. To expand your knowledge and practice more questions, you have to refer to online classrooms, which is Google Classroom platform, where you can find many exercises, quizzes, and self-checked automated questions. So if you have any questions, feel free to comment below and write to the refer to the administrative departments. We hope we can help you with the best effort. So thank you very much for your attention and enjoy your preparation to the IELTS.